Hello everyone, and welcome to News and News for February the 22nd, 2024. It was quite the weekend this past weekend in the Nipua area. Um, so many events going on in so many areas, um, more than we could fit on the show today. Um, so not only do we have longer versions of all of these things, but there is additional content from um, Louis Riel Day out in Minnedosa and uh, various other events around the Nipua area. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, first of all, we were out at the Cheryl Kunzelman art opening. This was out at Arts Forward, um, the new show that's on for the next two months out there. So we have an interview with the artist as well as a quick whirl around the show. But certainly if you were able to get there in person, you'll want, definitely want to do so. And again, it is up for the next two months, so you have plenty of time. Um, next, we go right out to Winnipeg, actually. Um, because it was a Louis Riel day, there was a special recognition of Louis Riel as the first prime minister of, Man or first premier of Manitoba, sorry. <laughs> and um, they did the portrait hanging on Louis Riel day at the legislature. So we have some footage of that as well as our uh, premier speaking about that. We are also more locally in the winter festival here in Nipois. This took place on Sunday. Uh, lots of new events, all kinds of stuff. Apparently over a thousand people attended this. So it was certainly a, a very exciting day, which ended with a wonderful fireworks display, which we also got some footage of for you. So I know it's not the same as seeing them in person, but at least we've got a little bit of that joy there. And as well, we were out in Minnedosa for Skate and Rock the Lake. This is they they clear on the lake a number of pieces of ice for for hockey, for curling, for other uh, sort of winter events. Uh, crow curl, I think they had out there, right on the ice on the lake. So we were out there and got a bit of footage of that for you as well. And again, more of all of these events and others elsewhere in the NATV schedule over the next couple, next couple of weeks. If there's anything we missed, anything coming up, anything that uh, you know about that you can tell us about or have footage of, please do get in touch with us. The number is 204-476-2639 or by email nactv at wcgwave.ca. Thanks and enjoy the show. Hi, I'm really thrilled to um, speak about the art show today. My name is Cheryl Kunzelman. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got my Captured Reflections collection on display here at uh, Arts Former Gallery. Mm -hmm. And I think there's 37 pieces and they range from portraits of family and loved ones to pets of the family and loved ones and then things from nature and just a lot of a lot of um, a lot of things that I love because my last collection was called My Favorite Things. So this one I just built on that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so um, mm -hmm. my medium I use is called Pan Pastel. It was uh, developed in 2007. It's a powder, compressed powder into little pots. Mm -hmm. And you paint with sponge tip tools and it flows like a fluid, but it's a powder. So it's very forgiving because you can, it's erasable with a uh, paintable gum eraser, but it's blendable and uh, mm, okay. yes. but the colors are very vibrant mm -hmm. so it's just uh it's a really neat medium to work with uh, so for all the artworks everything that, you have, that uh, i have in this collection use that, uh, is done by with the pan pastel mm, how long have you been painting um well i have to be honest i started art doing art when i was really little my dad got me into it my dad's an artist mm -hmm. and he got me into you know just drawing and then I started in high school, I was doing portraits of my friends. And then I started doing oil painting. And from there I went to watercolor. And I did watercolor for a lot of years. I met a man who was, his name was Nick May out of, in Grand Prairie, Alberta. And he got me on fire for water, watercolor painting. He was a fantastic artist. Um, and then from there, I I kind of took some time off because I had a baby in 2012, and he kept me busy for a while. <laughs> and we moved to Winnipeg in 2014, so uh, it took a few years to get him off to school. But then once once he was off to school, I kind of started to paint some more, and then. Um, when COVID hit, I had to create him a school schoolroom space, and I realized that I had a studio when he went back to school. So once I had this 
big studio to use, I started working full time and taking commissions and starting to build a collection and doing shows and stuff. So that's okay. kind of how it worked. So it was kind of an evolution over time. Mm -hmm. okay. So ca Captured co Reflection is the name of the... Captured Reflections is the name of my, uh, both the name of my business and the name of this collection. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So what's like your inspiration for doing my this My inspiration, <laughs> it, it varies. I, I like to paint things that remind me of something, like remind me of my childhood, for example. The painting um, that says, uh, it's called One Day Little Mousy. For example, my dad used to sit me on his knee and tell me stories and it always started with one day a little mousy. Okay. So I thought I want to create a painting that sort of gives a nod towards that period of time. And things that I love, like I've always collected frogs and I love frogs, so I've got a frog collage. And, and things out of nature, I've got lots of portraits of family because, I mean, who doesn't love a grandson, right? So I'm always <laughs> painting my grandkids. Uh, and just okay. nature and God's creation, that's where my inspiration comes from. Mm -hmm. And okay. you know, I have to stick close to home because I'm I have progressive MS, so I don't get out and do a bunch of stuff. So it really brings me a lot of uh, pleasure to be able to uh, go into my studio and create something and show it to people. It, it just makes me happy. Uh, okay. Yeah, anything else that you would like to add? No, but. Uh, I just, I'm just really happy to, because this, this art show is kind of a homecoming for me because mm. I was here from 2002, we moved from Alberta, mm. right up until 2014, so I raised my girls here, my girls are adults, and they graduated from NACI, so when I had an opportunity to do an art show here in Nipua, I was over the moon because I, I owned a business here, I had Tony's Cabin, it was a restaurant cafe, and I have so many memories of you, so it's like a homecoming. Homecoming for you. Wow, congratulations. All right, thank and you thank so much. thank you, Sharon. Yeah. <laughs>
thank you very much, uh, Will. And thank you, uh, everyone who uh, is joining us here today. Welcome to your building, the People's Building, the Manitoba Legislature. And it is uh, great to be here on a Louis Riel day. I want to thank uh, President Chartrand and uh, the Métis Cabinet for all of the uh, important work that you've done over the years as the MMF to uh, advocate for Mr. Riel's uh, proper place in our province's history. I also want to acknowledge that we're gathered here today on the homeland of the Red River Métis, as well as the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg and Dakota, and that the work we do here at the Ledge is carried out across the territories also of the Anishininuak, the uh, Dakota, the Dene, and uh, the Inuit, and the Cree. So it was very important for our government that our first bill, the first bill that we passed, was the Louis Riel Bill. Yeah. I've heard Ms., uh, Mr. Chartrand say, Kago uh, Wanikin, Wanjiing, don't forget where you come from. And that's sort of what we were thinking of by making that the first bill. We're looking to the future. A lot of great things we want to do so that Métis citizens and all Manitobans can embrace a very positive future here in Manitoba. But in order for us to move forward in a good way, we also have to acknowledge our history, our heritage, and the lineage that we come from. And so, of course, we all know that uh, Mr. Riel was the uh, head of the government here, the first uh, democratic government, according to that uh, tradition, in uh, Manitoba. And so uh, we saw fit to uh, acknowledge him as the uh, first premier. So we know that uh, Mr. Riel not only served that important role, but also his uh, rights that he articulated set forth the vision for our province of Manitoba, a vision of equality, a vision where people had the right to speak French and uh, speak other minority languages, that recognized Indigenous rights, and really, at the end of the day, recognize the ability of all of us to live here together on these lands and to make uh, the most of our full potential. And so that's Riel's vision, and I'd like to think as we go further into the future, each day we're getting closer to realizing Riel's vision. We also know that uh, formalizing this true title uh, is one more step. And one other step is to ensure that the portrait has a nice plaque beneath it to recognize this official title. And so that's the uh, honor that we decided to uh, come together today to pay tribute uh, towards. And so looking forward to the, uh, the big unveiling in a few minutes' time. But I do just want to say I think this is an important step. Today, as the Premier of Manitoba, one of my titles is President. President of the Executive Council. And we know that in his day, Mr. Riel was the president of that council, of their government at the time. So really, according to a technical definition, or just looking at the historical accuracy, we're uh, stepping up today to acknowledge another piece of Manitoba's true history, which I think helps all of us as Manitobans better understand where we come from and where we're going. Alors, je suis très heureux d'être ici au palais législatif. C'est votre uh, palais législatif uh, pour reconnaître uh, le grand travail de M. Riel. Louis Riel uh, était la prim le premier premier ministre du Manitoba. Et puis, ça fait longtemps que nous avons connu le grand travail qu'il a fait pour reconnaître la langue française, la, le, le, les droits des langues minoritaires, les droits des Autochtones, mais aussi d'avoir une vision de créer une province où tout le monde pourrait habiter ici dans une façon euh, d'améliorer leur vie et puis euh, la vie des autres. Alors pour nous, c'était toujours la vision de M. Riel et je crois qu'à chaque jour, ici dans la province de Manitoba, que nous sommes en train de, de, de diriger plus et plus proche à cette vision de M. Riel. So, once again, I just want to say, Miguel Pijae, can you know what I'm going to talk? I'm going to talk about Pijae, and I'm going to talk about Pijae. 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 I'm going to talk Set. 
I'm sure there's some folks who want to chat with you in the back. Thank you all. Have a fantastic Louis Riel day.
Cooper and I'm the Director of Recreation Services with the Town of Neepaw and we're here at our Winter Festival which is held on Louis Riel weekend every year in February. Uh, we have lots of volunteers, lots of sponsors that help make this day possible. Um, obstacle course, sleigh rides, um, bow in the dark adventure trails and this year we're also doing fireworks at dusk. So, um, we switched it to the Sunday just so that people could come and take the fireworks in, enjoy some night out with their family, and then have the day tomorrow to recoup before you go back to school and mm -hmm. enjoy it. And so far, the turnout's yeah, been really good. Yeah, <laughs> We have 500 hot dogs and some. We're blowing through them, so there's tons of people, and it's going good. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. 